In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. After years of sacrifice, Sarah Miller hopes a new home will provide a better life for her children. But when a vicious entity attacks, her dream home becomes a hellish nightmare. Soon, the bonds holding the family together are pushed to their limits as they desperately struggle against a force they cannot identify. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Northern California, where the Cascade Mountains tower over glistening lakes and lush vineyards. But in the shadows of this scenic landscape, there is a dark side where the unsuspecting walk hand in hand with the supernatural. In the fall of 2000, Sarah Miller buys a three-bedroom ranch in a small Northern California town for her 13-year-old daughter, Becky, and five-year-old son, Jack. To protect her identity, Sarah appears under the condition of anonymity. My dream as a single mom had always been to own a home. So I saved my money. It took quite a bit, a couple of years to do that. It was something that I never thought I could ever accomplish. Sarah hopes her kids are as excited as she is to spend their first night in the house. Well, it's a lot bigger than our apartment. I liked our apartment. Oh, just think, Becky. If a little paint, some work, it'll be as good as new. Becky wishes she never had to move an hour and a half away from her hometown of Reading. I was used to the city. That's where all my friends were. And it felt like a different world to me. Furniture won't arrive until the next day, but Sarah makes the best of it by camping out in the living room. Don't we have like a couch or something we can sleep on? Honey, nothing will be here until tomorrow. Oh, oh. Oh, great, how am I supposed to use the bathroom? Honey, you know where it is. I got a flashlight right here, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, honey. Come right back. Feel cozy? What do you say, ready for prayers? Angel of God, dear, to whom God's love commits me. Something about the hallway just scared me, and I didn't know why. Sweet dreams. 
The next day, Sarah's boyfriend, Steve, arrives from Reading with the furniture. Sarah's mother, Ruth, has also come to help. Wanting to be close to her grandkids, Ruth plans to buy an apartment near Sarah. Until then, she'll live with the family and help out with Jack. So, what do you think? Think that I am so proud of you. That afternoon, Sarah helps Becky unpack. It's freezing in here. That room was cold. Very, very cold. But you went outside of that room and the whole house was fine. It smells funny too. Well, open the window. Oh, I know. I bet it's just this bent. I'll have Steve take a look at it this weekend. My mom just said, because I'm at the far end of the house, that's probably why my room isn't getting warm. But I thought there was something else. And maybe that smell is coming from it. that skunk in the closet. <sighs> Becky, please. I'm exhausted. And I really need your help. There's more? Do you really have to go back tonight? Got an early day tomorrow. I promised Dad I'd help him out on the ranch. Him being in one town and me in another was very difficult. But I knew it would work. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. It just sounded like a man and two women outside my window trying to get my attention. Hello? Is anybody out there? Sure you eat it all. Honey, it's 7 a.m. Why aren't you dressed? This is gonna sound weird, but um, I kept hearing voices outside my window last night. Well, it was probably just the neighbors. How could it be the neighbors? They're too far away. Honey, I don't know. Just eat your breakfast. Sarah believes her daughter is just experiencing anxiety from the move. Starting a new school, getting to meet new kids, and being a teenager, that was very difficult for her. Look, I need you to come home right after school today. What else am I gonna do? It's not like I have any friends around here. Becky, I know this is hard for you, but try, okay? Whatever. Jack, be good for Grandma. Okay, bye, Mom. Bye. As the weeks pass, Becky feels increasingly disconnected. I have no friends at school. My mom and I aren't getting along, and I was just isolated. Grandma's taking me to skate park. Wanna come? Jack, I told you I'm doing homework, okay? Are you sure? Yeah. 
Okay, see ya. There was no logical explanation. It was moving and then it fell. Mom, my ballerina, the, the one on top of the teeth, it just fell and smashed to the floor and... Um, honey, it was probably just the vibration of the television. Mom, the TV was not on! Don't you yell at me, Rebecca Marie. But, I won't have it. But Mom, there's something wrong with this house and I, I, I can't Please, explain it, okay? I, I just For Pete's sake, Becky. Just because your ballerina broke doesn't mean there's something wrong with the house. Hello? I was getting more upset because it's just me. Nothing's happening to my mom. Hey, hold on. Look, if you don't like your room, you can have your grandmother's when she moves out. Fine. Hey, sorry. Becky's ballerina broke. Yeah. No, that's all. How you doing? Are you still coming out Friday? It looked like a tornado hit my room. Honey, I'm on the phone. But I just went over to get you and Honey, I... what did you do in here? I didn't do anything. I just came to get you and then Clean you came in here and... Up. I was just bombarded with all these different emotions. I just wanted to be normal. And being in that house, I couldn't be normal. Several months after moving in, Becky's grandmother finds an apartment. As promised, Becky takes her room. I wish you were leaving. I know, honey, but I won't be very far. You always reach me close by. I love you. And I love you, sweetheart. My grandma has the most wonderful relationship with God, so I felt protected. I felt safe in her room. Time for prayers. Angel of God, my God. Jack, who has been staying with Sarah, moves into Becky's old room. Watch over me throughout the night and keep me safe within your sight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, kiddo.
said they'd come out of the closet. I told you there was something wrong with this room. Becky, you're not helping. Honey, there are no people in your closet. See? I saw them. They were right there, though. Honey, it's late, and we really have to get to sleep. Please, Mommy, it's the guys who are going to come. He can sleep with me tonight. Fine. Later that night, Sarah wonders if there is something more to her kids' stories. My daughter is hearing voices. My son is seeing things. I was just very confused. And at the same time, I'm beginning to feel scared. Hello? I thought there was a man in my home, and this man was gonna harm my two kids. something here, isn't there? Yeah. Where's Jack? He's in my room. In my mind, there was going to be death in my family. I thought that was our blood. Jack?
God's gonna protect us now, okay? I told my kids we're gonna fight. Our Father, who art in heaven. We prayed for God to accompany us, to be like, with us. Um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To protect us. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses. The next morning, Sarah moves Jack out of the small bedroom and into Becky's room permanently. I knew the focus was in that room, and I didn't want my son in danger. If there's things in the closet, we'll put a picture of Jesus in there. That weekend after the kids have gone to sleep, Steve hey. arrives from Reading. How you doing? I'm all right. You good? Yeah. How was your trip? It was a little long. Yeah. Yeah. Want a glass of wine? Sure. Sarah, what's wrong? I'm just a little tired. I can tell when something's wrong. The kids were right, Steve. There's something wrong with the house. I don't know what to do. Sarah, you know I don't believe in that stuff. But I do believe my place is here with you and the kids. Marry me, Sarah. Be my wife. Be my family. <laughs> Sarah and Steve decide to get married in the fall. Until then, she and her children remain alone in the house. there was something evil in that room. But I didn't understand how could it be there? Why would it be there? From now on, this door stays closed.
for days, Sarah's mind races with possible explanations for the presence in her home. I thought somebody was murdered in my home. Maybe we had a ghost that hasn't passed on. Sarah hopes her neighbor knows something about hey, the history Sarah? of her house. Sure, I've got a minute. Have you settled in all right? <sighs> yeah, we're getting there. Hey, I was wondering if I could ask you a question. She says, I kind of figured you'd come around asking sooner or later. Well, the woman who lived there before you, she had a teenage daughter who, well, she was no angel. Sarah's neighbor doesn't know of any deaths in the house, but she shares something just as disturbing. Satan worshippers? Uh-huh. I mean, they had all sorts of black masses and God knows what over there in that house. I said, in what room? She says, your daughter's room. I should have told you sooner. No, no, it's all right. Call me if you need me. You have my number. Thanks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Not knowing what else to do, Sarah asks her parish priest to bless her home. Now pray that he will enter this home and bless it with his presence. The goodness of Christ. The ceremony gives her hope. Amen. I felt peaceful. Thank you. I felt very comfortable. After a month of no activity, the haunting appears to be over. So, my dad and I are camping when late at night, this bear appears. Life gets even better when Sarah and Steve marry that fall. Then, one Friday night, Steve goes out of town to his father's ranch. His father has several acres, and so he would leave on the weekends to go help his father. to say something in Latin. Sarah has no idea what the phrase means, but she knows it's evil. I felt that it wanted me to worship it. Desperate for answers, Sarah looks up the Latin phrase on the internet. It means, we are here. Becky fears what may happen if they stay in the house. And I was terrified. What else is it gonna do now? Kids are finally asleep. What's going on, Sarah? That Sunday, when Steve returns home, Sarah tells him everything. There's something really wrong with this house, Steve. I'm sorry, Sarah, but you're asking me to believe in something I can't see. I just can't do I it. was choked, Steve. I spoke Latin. No, so see. I don't know Latin. Give in to your fear, Sarah. Right? There has to be a logical explanation for the things you're experiencing. I'll just handle it on my own, like usual. He never heard anything, saw anything. I'm being bullied, and my husband doesn't understand that, so I feel alone. As Sarah and Steve's relationship becomes strained, things in the house go from bad to worse. I 
felt breathing in my ear and it was cold. It looked like she was dead. Please, Mommy, we, we have to move. We can't stay here. Don't be ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with the house. <laughs> tears at her heart, but she allows Becky to move in with a friend back in Reading. I love you. I love you too. I want you to mind your manners, and do your homework. I know. Okay. Becky's relieved to escape the house, but has mixed feelings about leaving her mom and Jack. I felt bad because I got to leave the house and her and my brother were stuck there. Passing day since Becky's departure, Sarah struggles to hold herself together. I'm heartbroken. I'm depressed. I desperately wanted to move out, but I was financially strapped. I was stuck. You got what you wanted! You tore my family apart! Now leave us alone! But we constantly mimic her voice. It just tormented me. This thing was after my family. I needed to get some help. A search of paranormal investigators leads Sarah to Phantasm Psychic Research, a Connecticut-based organization. Dave Considine founded the group in 1994. Hello? Mr. Considine? Yes. Hi. My name's Sarah Miller. I think there's something really evil in my house. Phantasm's basic goal is to help individuals that feel that there's something in their home or there's something interceding in their life. All right, can you tell me what you've been experiencing? It all started with my kids. The group takes a scientific as well as a spiritual approach to supernatural Maybe. investigations. Look, uh, Ms. Miller, I believe we need to have an extended conversation. I am a right. lay religious demonologist, which means that I'm not clergy, but I work with the church. You know, remember, Dave. Before leaving for California, Considine consults a priest with extensive experience in spiritual warfare, Bishop Robert McKenna. Speaking in Latin, she said the words, nos sumus hic. We are here. For over 30 years, the bishop has worked hand in hand with paranormal investigators. I think the family might be in real trouble. You're absolutely right. You should do everything in your power to help them. Anticipating a spiritual battle, Considine must carry out an intense cleansing ritual. Thank you, Father. I'll prepare myself by fasting for nine days. 
I'll also purge myself through confession and keep myself in constant prayer. Because if you're fighting the ultimate evil, you want to be ultimately good. In June 2001, Considine and his team travel from Connecticut to Northern California. There was this sense of doom. It made you feel as though you were being watched. I'd like to interview the whole family. The you investigators that I brought with me were hmm. my co-founder, Barbara Considine, John Arell, who's my technical director, and Barbie Hyde, who is also a light clairvoyant. I'd like to interview the My role during the investigation was to try to figure out the nature of the spirit, as well as assisting with the setup of the electronic equipment. I understand you've been through a lot. I'm really glad that you're here with us. It's no problem. Becky has returned home for the investigation, but Jack will stay with his grandmother. Sir, can you tell me again about the choking incident? Sure. The team will live with the uh, family for an entire week. In that time, they will use an array of high-tech equipment to document the presence in the house. Infrared video cameras and special lenses capture heat sources invisible to the naked eye. Line analyzers graph visual images of sounds not audible to the human ear, registered by low-frequency microphones. Electromagnetic field monitors, or EMFs, detect shifts in magnetic fields. Laser thermometers measure temperatures of moving objects from a distance. The team must know exactly what they are dealing with before taking any action. Um, I felt that. That night, the team places cameras and listening devices throughout the house. David, can I get you anything else? No, we're fine. Get some sleep. Yeah, we have to get to bed. We need to turn it, too. So, what do you think? Well, Sarah and Becky's stories are consistent. I'm pretty sure there's an entity in the house. Human or non-human? It's too early to tell. I'll take the first shift. You guys go get some sleep. It sounded like a bomb went off. David? David! Oh. My body, which was in a horizontal position, was pushed okay. straight up. David, are you okay? I'm fine. Obviously, I was quite shaken. What the hell was that? I don't know. I think it was a warning. Did you see that? It just lifted me up. I heard this big noise. You know, it's, just... its whole intention is to scare you away. It's trying to drive you away from me so you will not help that family. After a long night, paranormal investigator Barbie Hyde reviews the case. I was unsure of the best way to handle the situation. Heavenly Father, guide us in our endeavor to help this family. Give me the strength to face whatever task may be at hand. I ask this in the name of the Father. Water, in defiance of the laws of physics, went counterclockwise in a circle. As the week pushes on, the investigators continue to gather evidence. Turn on? Yeah. Okay. 
Hmm. What's that? It's called the big ear. This is able to pick up sounds that are not audible to the human ear. When you have ethereal sounds, they usually fall below 300 hertz. Do you want to try? Sure. sure. Let's put the headphones on. Okay. Um, what do I do? And then you press that button. There. Yeah, and okay. just point. And you aim. Oh. I could hear the struggle. It sounded like a female's choking, and then I heard. Shut up, she's listening. Shut up, she's listening. The investigators now know they are dealing with an entity far more dangerous than any human spirit. Bishop McKenna. Oh, Bishop. Dave Considine. How's California? Uh, not so good. Uh, everything that we've been seeing and hearing points to a diabolical presence. Are you sure? Yes, Bishop. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I trust your judgment, David. I do. Considine knows demons are merciless. Thank you, Bishop. If we didn't initiate something, it would totally destroy this family, without any doubt in my mind. Later that night, Considine calls the family together. We reviewed the evidence, and it seems clear the home is inhabited by a demonic device. He says, you have a demon here. And with your faith, we're gonna fight this. But we had the house blessed. That's a common misconception. Uh, it's always good to have your house blessed. But if you have a demonic in your home, fact, this just enrages the spirit. It's like poking a bear with a stick. A demon is essentially a fallen angel, and its goal is to destroy man. In a family situation, it starts by destroying the family unit. How is this possible? But at first it's Considine believes the, the black masses held by the previous tenant created a gateway for the demon. If there are demons, I knew there has to be a way to get rid of them. Bishop McKenna has given me permission to perform a minor rite of exorcism, and fumigation. This ritual must take place during the daytime. We can begin first thing in the morning. Everything in the kitchen is open. Okay. Is there a light? Please, I can light yes. this one. Are you ready? Yep. We had already come prepared with the proper tools to take care of the problem, blessed for us by Bishop Robert McKenna. St. Mike. One vital tool is the sensor, which houses the holy incense. You go throughout the house with the sensor, and you put the smoke in every nook and cranny that you can. The demon cannot be in the presence of the Holy Incense. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Yeah, I was so exhausted. I was so sick of feeling scared. Finally, I have some help. Peace be on this house and with all who live here. In using the rites of exorcism, you are sanctifying that home. You are driving these demonic creatures back to hell. The ancient serpent. Who is the devil? And Satan cast him about his feet. As day turns to night, the team continues the ritual in Becky's old room where it all began. Almost 
I stood there listening for a few minutes and I started to hear the growling, the gagging, the retching noises. It was emanating out of the closet. And of course, when I opened the closet door, there was nothing there, nothing to be seen. Finally, there's only one place left for the demon to hide, the garage. A very, very oppressive feeling came down on you like a vice when you walked into the room. was no longer there and you felt safe the demon has been driven back to hell the next day Sarah drives Considine and his team to the airport family, the nightmare is finally over. If the investigators wouldn't have come, I don't know what would have happened. But for Sarah, the house holds too many bad memories. Son and the Holy Ghost. She and Steve buy a new home across town and ask house. their priest to bless the property. Not wanting to uproot her daughter again, Sarah allows Becky to stay in Reading. It made me realize that good would always win over evil. Son, the ghost. No matter what, if you have your strong faith, it'll win in the end. May God bless you with love, peace, 